my name's Andy, and on today's video, we're going to finish installing the T5 transmission in my 1966 Mustang. In the last video, we went through removing the old transmission, bell housing, the flywheel, taking the whole clutch system out from underneath the dash, and removing the master cylinder off the file wall. Now we got to go back and put everything back in the car and, uh, and button this thing up. The first part we're going to start with is the new clutch cable setup. We got to drill a hole in the firewall and mount that bracket, and then we got to attach that new uh, clutch lever system with what I've got in the car so we can use the cable. Um, and we'll put the master cylinder back in and get all that buttoned up on that side, and then we can move under the car and start doing stuff like the, the block off plate, and the new flywheel, and the new clutch, new bell housing, all that kind of stuff, and start getting everything ready for the new transmission. So let's get started. So here's the clutch kit, the cable clip that I purchased from MDL, Modern Driveline Technologies. Here's their, uh, their part number for that. And this is designed for the 6566. It's a slightly different one for the 6768. The holes are different. I think like the bracket's slightly different. Um, so you may want well to make sure that you get the right kit for your car. And then they come with instructions on what to do, how to install everything. So we'll be going through that. And then... Uh, Here's the cable, pretty beefy unit, uh, so that'll that'll be good. So this is the part that we want to take out first. So this is going to bolt onto the side of the, if you were facing the clutch pedal, it would go this way, and the clevis would go towards the firewall, and that's where the that's where this end is going to thread into here on this cable clutch, and then as you actuate the clutch pedal, it'll pull this way and disengage the, or engage the clutch so because we had a clutch already a, a mechanical clutch with the z-bar and everything we will need to put this plug in the firewall that's just to block it off which is great to have and then we've got some mounting hardware for the cable uh, i believe this is uh we'll bolt this to the side of the oil pan just to kind of hold everything in place hold everything in line and hold it away from the uh from the headers so we want to hold on to this hardware and the last piece is this bracket. And this is what we're gonna use as a template first. We'll bolt this on using the two bolts that hold the master cylinder. We'll just hold this in place. Then we'll mark on the firewall where we're gonna drill. Take this back off, drill the hole. Then we can put it back on for a final time and put all the, the hardware back in and mount it all back up. And then this will, this will go in there. And away we go. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, so let's get to it. You know, I was just test fitting this up here just to see how everything lined up. And you know, you can really just hold this in place while you mark the hole. I mean, the hole we're gonna drill is large enough that even if we're off by a 16th or an eighth of an inch uh, with respect to the mounting holes and everything down here below, we're gonna be fine. So that's about as centered as I can get it in all those holes down below. So we'll just go ahead and mark the center of this. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but that mark is the Sharpie mark is there. So that's what we're going to drill, and then uh, we'll get the unit bit out and, and make it easy. We're supposed to go up to a one inch size, so we're going to start with a smaller bit just to kind of get things started, and then we'll go up from there. All right, now we'll step up to one inch. All right, there we go. Whole lines up, all those line up, everything's good. We can go ahead and uh, Assemble the cable to the bracket, and then we can put the bracket back in the car. So when you put this cable in, make sure you thread this all the way down to the bottom of this. Take the O-ring off, slide this through the bracket, put the O-ring back on, and it holds it in place. And then when we get done, we can fine tune the, see as we spin this out, it changes the, the position of the cable. We can use that for fine tuning when we need to adjust the cable length uh, down the road. So now we go ahead and bolt this in the onto the firewall, and we'll feed this through into the cab, and then we can, once we get it inside, then we'll spin the clevis on and then attach it to the, to the clutch pedal. All right, when you put that bracket in, make sure that the clutch cable routes underneath the, the export brace or if you have the, the cowl bracing that's on here, and then if you have a Monte Carlo bar, just make sure it goes underneath all that stuff because then we're gonna loop it back down and underneath the motor later on. But for now, we've got it in place. We can go ahead and we need to put, we need to put this back on for the brake master cylinder. And we'll do that and then we'll bolt it up to the to the firewall and then put the top bolts up here as well. All right, now we got the bracket in. That was a lot of work. Uh, you have to, I had to get different bolts for the uh, the master cylinder mount. The ones that were on there weren't long enough because I've got a bracket for my 
uh, brake distribution block, and then I have the bracket for this clutch. So the, between those two brackets, it put it out just enough where this bolt wouldn't reach. So we had to get some new bolts for that. Uh, but everything's back together. Also, I forgot to mention, down back, and you can't really see it right now because the, the distribution block bracket's in the way, but there's that plug that goes in the firewall to block up the hole where the clutch mechanism came through. So don't forget to put that in before you put the bracket in. All right, let's go underneath the dash and uh, finish hooking up the clutch cable. All right, now that we got that clutch master cylinder back in the firewall, we can go ahead and, and hook up, and see this is almost on there already, hook up that plunger back onto the, back on there, but we need to have the switch to go with it. So don't forget that. And that's this guy here. This, uh, this brake switch has to go on there. So we gotta hook that back up. And then we also need to get a hold of the clutch cable. Now that's feet, we gotta find it. It's up here in the top somewhere. And we gotta hook up that clutch lever, pedal lever to it. And so let's get that done. All right, we got the brake switch hooked back up to the pedal. So we're good there. We got the cotter pin put in and everything's good on this side. Everybody's happy. And over here, this was a little bit of work. Um, I found the easiest way to do this is to take the clevis off the top of the bracket and thread that onto the end of the cable and then feed that cable down here because it doesn't come down very far and then you can attach the bracket to that clevis with the pin and the cotter pin and do it that way and then you bolt it to the brake pedal. There is already a hole in the brake pedal uh, for this bolt so you don't have to modify the pedal at all. You just bolt the bracket right up to the, uh, the brake pedal and you're good to go. So everything on this side of the firewall is hooked up and ready to go. Now we can go back to the other side. So everything's good, everything's plugged back in up here. Like I said, we're all good on that side of the firewall. We're going to the other side. So now this cable, what we want to do is we want to route this cable down. And for right now, we're going to go right in front of the fuel pump, but behind the sway bar. And we'll see where we need to go. We might have to go behind the fuel bar or the fuel tube right here. Um, we'll see how it goes when we get this thing plugged up to the, the bell housing. For right now, this is good enough. We'll just go ahead and feed it down here and then we can mess with it when we get underneath the car. So for the the speedometer converter box, um, there's not much to show uh, with how to wire it up. Um, we're gonna, since we don't have an OBD port, we don't have to worry about this wire. But we do need to hook these up. And what it tells us is the red wire goes to a switched positive source. So when the key is on, this is hot. The black wire goes to ground. The brown wire goes to the speedometer sensor, um, well, the, the harness plug on the side of the transmission. And this orange wire goes to this switch. And this switch is what I'll hold to activate when I go to do the calibration of this box. So um, <laughs> there's not much else to it. This is the speedometer cable that, you know, we're gonna thread this end on here and then we'll feed this up inside the dash and feed this into the back of the, of the speedometer. And, and that's pretty much it. Um, I don't think you guys really care about the wiring part so much, it's just, you know, make sure we get everything where it goes. And then, uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll calibrate it when it comes time. Oh, also in the instructions that it comes with, I went through and I highlighted the important stuff. Um, in the case of mine, they have a two wire uh, transmission speed sensor. So the brown wire goes to one side of the of that harness and then the other side of that harness on the side of the transmission just goes to ground. And then the other thing that I highlighted uh, was the orange wire. Same thing. Orange wire goes to here and then the other side of this goes to ground when, you know, this is only for the calibration. It's the only time we need to use this. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward. And that takes care of that. For the reverse light, we need to utilize the same wiring that we had in here from before. And then we just need to hook up the, the plug that goes on the side of the transmission. And there's no, we don't have to worry about which wire goes with what. We just connect them both up and then we're good there. And then the other part that we need to hook up is the speed or the speedometer wiring harness that plugs inside the transmission. So that's gonna go to ground. And then the other end of the wire is going to connect with this wire that we have fed through the firewall where the old speedometer cable went through, we'll just we'll just uh, run this wire down and connect it to the connector there. And we might do that towards the end, uh, just so we make sure we get the right length with the transmission in place. But we can go ahead and hook up reverse light harness. Hopefully this will reach. Uh, I measured it, and you know, I, 
from here to here it looks like it'll fit but uh Fingers crossed, I think we're gonna be okay, but uh, it might be a little tight, so we'll see how it goes. All right, so that takes care of that. And then uh, the next thing I need to do is, I just need to connect this one here. So this is gonna be the, the speedometer. I guess I can shorten that a little bit, but uh, I'm gonna have to wait till we get the transmission in to make sure I get this one the right length. Uh, actually, I changed my mind. I went ahead and wired this up. Uh, I didn't want to try to mess with stuff once we get the transmission in. And we just grounded it here on the chassis. And so this will uh, this will just plug right into the side of the transmission and the ground wire or the reverse light. So I think I think we're good. I think we can start putting the, uh, the transmission and all the stuff back on the motor. Before we put the flywheel in, I did want to point out, uh, I marked it with a Sharpie here. There is one hole that's not in line of this pattern. And it's because this has a 28 ounce imbalance. And what it does is it puts the imbalance this part right here in a certain spot relative to the crank and so in a way this by having this bolt offset it forces you to, to clock the the flywheel in a specific position so that it, it mates with the uh, crank hub on the other side of the motor so uh, when you're putting that up and you're you're spinning it around to make sure that the holes line up you'll find that there's only one way that this will go on and then the you need to use new bolt. You're supposed to torque these down to, I believe, 85 foot-pounds. And it's always a good idea in this scenario to use new bolts. These are cheap. Um, this I got this from Modern Driveline. Um, that's the, the part number from ARP if you can get them anywhere else. But uh, And then um, we just need to put some Loctite on here before we, before we put this in the motor so that it'll seal up. Because I was saying before, the holes in the crank go right through into the oil pan. And, and if you don't tighten the bolts, or I'm sorry, if you don't put Loctite on the bolts, you can get oil to leak through and it'll look like you might have a rear main seal leak because oil would be leaking off of the back of the flywheel down down the edge and then into the where the bell housing is. So uh, I think we can go put this on. Actually, I don't want to forget, we need to put on this new block off plate uh, before you put the flywheel on. Uh, so let's do that. All right, now we could put this block off plate on here and uh, just line it up with the pins, there we go. And this doesn't get sealed to the block or anything, so you don't have to worry about any uh, RTV or anything. Just hold it up there is, is, is all you need to do. And then we need to put the flywheel up. And this would be better if you had two people doing it. Um, but I'm doing this all by myself, so. And I think this is gonna go this way. I think that hole that I'm looking for is right there, yeah. We're just gonna use a bolt to hold it in place so it doesn't fall off. We'll go back and, and take this one off. Now for the, when we tighten them down, what we'll do is we'll put in some, uh, some bolts here and these are just 5 16 by 18 bolts. And what we'll do with that is we'll, we'll use a pry bar to hold this in place while we torque down the bolts for the flywheel. So also the instructions, I I, I said 85 foot-pounds to torque this out. It's actually 75 to 85 foot-pounds, so we're gonna split the difference and do 80 foot-pounds on all these. You need to put this stuff that came with the bolts on the, on the other side of the head here. That just needs to go on that lip, and then we'll put Loctite on the threads, and then we'll thread each one in and torque them down. All right, I had to move these bolts as we gotta twist it this way, so I gotta hold it in the other direction. So we'll do a crisscross pattern with these and we'll torque them to 80 foot pounds. Okay, that's all of them. Let's just do it again one more time just to make sure. All right, so those are Loctited, torqued down, we're good to go. All right, next up is our clutch and pressure plate. This is a 10 inch clutch. And uh, the guys at MDL, I love that they put the sticker on this side. Um, probably most of you guys are, you'll know that this side with the bulge sticks out, but um, 
don't forget to take that off too, but that's great to have that as a reminder uh, as you're putting this together. And then also new pressure plate. Uh, so when, when you're putting this together, when you're putting this in the car, before you tighten these down, you need to use the alignment tool. And what that'll do is that will center the clutch with the pilot bearing in the crankshaft. Um, if you didn't do that, this clutch could sit, I'm gonna exaggerate it, but it could sit off center like that or something like sit low or whatever, and that's not what we want. So that's why they supply these alignment tools with the clutch. And then for the bolts, we're gonna use these ARP, uh, here's the part number for those. Brand new bolts, just like the flywheel bolts, you wanna use brand new bolts for these clutch. So let's put this in the car. And again, remember, just don't forget to take the sticker off if you guys have that. Uh, so that's the, this is the flywheel side. So we'll flip it around. We we'll use the alignment tool to hold it in place while we put, oh, I forgot to point out, I put the pilot bearing in and I don't think I filmed that. So um, make sure you put a new pilot bearing in every time you do a clutch because this is a wear item and to, if you have to replace that bearing, you have to take everything apart like you're doing a clutch or a transmission. So you might as well just do it while you're here. So I, sh I don't think I pointed that out, that I put that in there. This is gonna be tricky. Once you get the, the pressure plate tightened down, we're gonna, we need to do 25 foot pounds on these bolts, but we're gonna do 15 first and then we'll go back and do 25. So because I'm using a smaller wrench, so this does inch pounds. So we're gonna do 180 inch pounds, which is 15 foot pounds. We'll just tighten these up to 15. Okay, so that's 15 foot pounds. Now we'll come back and do 25 foot pounds. Now you can pull the alignment tool out because the clutch is being held in place by the pressure plate, so we're good there. And now we can put the, uh, the bell housing on. All right, next is the bell housing. I went ahead and put some, some uh, wheel bearing grease on the end of that pivot stud, and we put some on these top points, points right here, and you put some in that recessed cup area behind these forks. And then you also put it on the inside of the throw bearing. Uh, note that there's a there's a bump here on the, the throw up bearing. Um, when you go to install this, it's going to sit this way. That bump needs to face towards the pivot ball. So in this case, if that's there's the bump right there, that would go this way inside this thing like that. It'd be easier if we can go ahead and install it this here instead of trying to put it in the uh, in the car this way. So there, that's. Now that's captured, make sure that the forks are above the, the lip of the pivot and they don't go past. You don't want to go all the way, well, I can't do it, but you don't want to go past the, the bumps on the, the forks there. You want to just sit in that little pocket so it kind of rotates like that. And then this bearing, it's a little bit of work here. Okay, so we're sitting right there on top of those forks and that detent, that bump, is facing the pin. From here, we can put this in the car and the clutch lever is gonna move like that and when we put it in there, it'll the, the back side of that throw bearing will push against the pressure plate. So let's put this in the car. And this is a little tricky, just making sure that this stays in place while we get everything lined up. So there are pins on the block that help align this so it only goes in one spot, so we're good there. And then when you put the bolts in, remember the, the four longer bolts go on the two sides and the two shorter bolts go on the top. All right, so you can see if you look down there, that's kind of more or less centered. And when we put the, the clutch there, the transmission and the input shaft will align up inside there and center that perfectly so for now it doesn't matter if it's if it's off to the side or not and then we just put the clutch cable in it's more of just a placeholder for right now uh, I'm I still have to put the headers back on so we may have to thread the the clutch cable around that but we'll put the transmission in first and then I can take the clutch pedal or the clutch cable back off and we don't have to worry about this thing being held in place anymore 
And don't forget, we need to torque down these bolts. We're gonna torque them down to 60 foot pounds, those six bolts that hold the bell housing to the motor. And we're gonna put on the new mount. This point has to face this, has to face towards the back. And so we'll just reuse the hardware that we took out of the other mount. And what we're gonna do is we'll just go ahead and put them in place, but we won't tighten it down all the way so that we can get a perfect alignment uh, in the car. When we go to put in this, we'll put this on here and we'll use the nuts that we had from the other transmission. And we'll use those to, to put this together, but we don't know exactly where this is gonna fall in relative to this and everything. So we'll just kind of leave, leave it loose for now. And then uh, we'll tighten when we get it in the car. If you've got two people to help you, this is probably better with another set of hands, but it can be done with just one person. So you just have to take your time. We need to lean the transmission back because the, the shifting mechanism is hitting the tunnel. So I have to tilt this back end down and get that input shaft to go upwards. And then it'll go into the throttle bearing and, and into the clutch. So let's get that done. All right, that took a little bit of work of getting the right angle with that thing going in there. Um, and then tightening the bolts down just kind of helps everything hold in place. And we can rem remove the jack, the floor jack now, uh, out from underneath the transmission because it is bolted to the bell housing. However, we do need to come back here and we need to push this up inside the cab and put the transmission subframe on here and, and locate, you know, we, were, we still have to finish locking that down. Uh, relative to the frame rails and stuff. So that's the next step. All right, now that we've got everything pushed up inside the tunnel here so that we can put this bracket on, um, we ran into a small problem. This mount is pushed all the way forward and the bolts are not in the hole. I don't know if this is the wrong transmission mount. It almost looks like this bracket needs to be back this way to scoot this bar towards the back of the car, which would move this bracket towards the back of the car and line up with those bolts. So uh, I guess we get to figure that out. Awesome. And right, everything points to the transmission is in the right place. It's just that this bracket is designed for the transmission, the 83 to 93 T5. This mount right here with the transmission rubber mount mounts to is actually about an inch farther forward. And on the 94 to 04, this mount is farther back. And so the brackets that you buy for the T5 swap are not made for this later transmission. Everything else lines up, everything else is in place, but this bracket would work if, if I had the older transmission, which I don't, that's <laughs> for another day. Um, so the, the, the goal here is to move the mount. We're gonna have to cut it we got about an inch from, if we were to put this bolt in the slot at the far end here, we need to move the bracket about an inch that way, about an inch towards the back of the car. And we have about an inch, if we take this tube when we cut it off the bracket here and we move this tube to this flush with this edge, that's about an inch. So we do that on both sides here. And uh, you can, you know, here you can see here, there's about an inch there. We do that and we move this bracket back and it'll, it'll mount the transmission where it needs to be. The transmission, the shifter mechanism is pretty much centered in the, in the hole up there in the tunnel. You know, everything else is where it needs to be. So we just need to move the bracket back. <laughs> all right, now we got the bracket all done. It's all welded up and painted and I will admit there was some grinding. You know, I might, <laughs> I might be the reason why they invented grinders um, so that you could cover up your bad welding. <laughs> And I don't have to worry about getting a job as a welder. Um, there's no danger of that. Anyways, uh, so everything's in place. All we need to do now is just go along and just tighten everything up. And, uh, and then we'll be ready to go to the next step. All right. All right, everything's tightened up. Bolts up there on the frame, the 
the rubber transmission mount bolts are all tightened up. Now we can go ahead and put the parking brake mechanism back together. All right, parking system is in, or the parking brake, sorry, is system is in. Uh, nothing touches back here. There was concern about bolts hitting this earlier, but I knew that if the bracket moved, we'd be good. Everything's hooked up, springs in place, this in place. I might have to adjust the tension on this just a little bit. It's, it's good now, but we might have to come back and get to it. That's all right. But other than that, everything's in place. Everything looks good. Um, I'm happy how this came out. Now we can move on. Let's go ahead and put the drive line in. All right, now we got to plug in the speed, the speedometer harness. And it's kind of hard to see, but it's on the side of the transmission here. And we're just going to plug that in until it clicks down there. So that's in place. And this can just hang out here for a second. We also have, this is the reverse light harness. And we'll run that through here. And this one doesn't matter which way it goes, whether it's front to back, back to front, it doesn't matter. So we'll just put it on there like that. I think maybe what we should do is we should zip tie these cables together just so that they're, they're not flopping around and getting caught and stuff. So let me uh, let me do that real quick. There, all right, that I mean, it's hard to see, but those are zip tied up there. We're good to go. Okay, next thing we wanna do, let's move over to the clutch cable. All right, there's two nuts that go on here and one's for, it's got a rounded edge on the front of it. So that'll sit in this cup that, this, that the harness is there, the wires, the cable's sticking through. And then the other one is just for it's just for securing that so that it's uh, it's not going to move on us and it's adjustable. So what we'll do is we'll get this threaded in place and then we'll kind of mess around with the clutch pedal and and uh, figure out where it needs to be in terms of uh, the engagement. You know this direction. All right, I'm going to go up and push the clutch pedal and see see how this goes. All right, everything seems pretty good for right now. We'll just go ahead and tighten this up and we'll, when we get to driving it, we can fine tune it. We also have that, that threaded uh, section on the firewall where it goes into the, to the bracket where it mounts uh, in the firewall. We can also do fine adjustments there in terms of clutch uh, cable tension. And we don't want to forget about the starter. All right, now it's time to hook on the shifter uh, mechanism. Uh, this right here, this is that speedometer uh, system I was telling you about that converts the digital signal from the transmission into a mechanical spinning cable for the for the dash so I'm gonna leave this out because I have to use it for calibration there's an actual there's an LED screen on the front here that I use for checking stuff and then there's the button that I installed underneath the dash for setting all that stuff so and then when I'm done I'm actually gonna zip tie it out of the way uh, so that I can get to it easily um, I can just cut the zip ties and pull it down if I need to instead of instead of hard mounting it until I get it all dialed in then we can figure about hard mounting but for this guy we need to put this guy in here and uh, and put the ball on. So let's get these screws in first. Much better, okay. And then we've got a new boot. The other one I had was torn, so we got one to go with this her shifter. And throw this guy on here. One thing I don't know is if this is gonna match with the screw holes that were there before, or if we gotta drill some new ones. 
I think we're gonna have to come back to that uh, here in a minute because I might have to do some hole drilling. But the last thing we need to put on here is the shifter ball and this one, just a white ball, just like the one I had before, but except now we got one more forward gear. Awesome. So we've got a, a, a set nut here that we can use to kind of dial in this position of the ball so that it's facing the right way. So we'll go ahead and thread that on first and then we can back it up and tighten it with the, with the shifter ball. All right there. Perfect. Oh, that looks good. Oh man, this is going to be great. All right. Uh, let me get, I'll have to get back to this. Uh, the next thing I think we need to do is put fluid in the transmission. On the side of the transmission, this is the drain plug and this is the fill plug up here. So what we're going to do is make sure this is good and tight first, but then we're going to take this one off and then we're going to just use one of these basic pumps to pump the fluid out of the out of the the quart and put it in the transmission and we need just under three quarts so we'll put the first two in and then we'll keep an eye when we're put, pumping the third one in for when it starts to, to leak out the hole up here then we know that we're full and we can be done All right, it's just starting to come out now, so I might have put a couple of drops in there too much, but that's okay. We're all right. That's where we want to be. Put the plug back in. All right, that's in. Fluid is done. All right, getting the driver's side header in is a lot more work. Um, you need to lift the motor, at least with these headers, you have to lift the motor to get the headers past the bell housing and the steering box and everything there's just not quite enough room in fact i had to lift the car another inch and a half you know put a block underneath the jack stand here to to get this car up a little higher because this was hitting the ground when i was trying to pivot everything to get it up in there anyways we got it up in there we're looking good now we do need to do the the clutch cable we need to route that through and around the headers and then uh put the gaskets in and bolt the headers up so routing the cable around these headers it's a little snug right here on this prime, on this tube here. And it, it's not a straight shot into the bell housing, but it's about as close as we're gonna get. Uh, we do have this heat shield piece that we can slide over, but I'm not sure if that's gonna be enough. So um, we may have to look into getting some additional heat shielding to put around this cable or around the tubing you know, maybe some of that header wrap or something just so that we don't have this problem with this cable melting because I really don't need that need that happening to me. But other than that, the cable, uh, I would say you could use these headers if you were doing a cable clutch. You just need to maybe just take a little more care with wrapping this area right here. But other than that, the, the cable is still a fairly straight enough shot that you should be able to make that work. All right, this is the clip that we want to put on the back side of this, where the, the cable comes through the, the bell housing. And uh, it's a little bit of a tight fit. But once you get that cable fed through there, then you put this clip on. All right, that clip is a snug fit. Um, it can take a little bit of work to get that on there, but it'll go on. Now we need to put the nuts, the adjustment nuts on the threads of the cable and we'll tighten these down and get this clutch in the right position. All right, so that's tight. And then again, don't forget the uh, the sheath for protecting the cable. Uh, again, we we're going to have to probably do something additional because I don't think this is going to be enough for right here. All right, now that we got that cable hooked up down below, the rest of it from here is the same as just taking the headers off. We're just going to go ahead and put them back on and button it up. All right, so here's the solution that we're going to use for that that header tube is too close to the clutch cable. Uh, just some of this thermo shield will wrap around there. It's got, it says that it's adhesive, but I went ahead and got some of these straps that you just you loop it through there and it's kind of a one-time deal. So we got a couple extra just in case. Um, but we're gonna put this on those exhaust, or the header tubes there and protect that uh, clutch cable. Okay, you can see we've started the wrap 
This would be much easier if I had done this off the car, but this, since this is an afterthought, this is the best we're gonna have to do. So just keep making a couple of loops and make sure you overlap uh, the previous layer by half and, uh, or at least half, and you just keep working your way around and then you'll get it done. All right, so this is wrapped up, ready to go. I got the these ties on here, these metal straps, just to kind of keep it from unraveling. Got those on both ends. And then I just need to feed this, this sheath back up there where it was. And then I think this is a lot more protection for that cable than we had before. So we're looking good there. All right, that is a swapped T5 in a 1966 Mustang. Uh, <laughs> that was quite a bit of work. Um, way more work than uh, I had anticipated. Um, this project, by the time I'm filming this now, I'm mm, about a month, maybe five weeks from the time I impulse bought that T5 transmission uh, till I got all the parts and then started taking the car apart. Um, I have probably not what it's changed. It's different. So with me trying to set up all the camera and getting everything set up, it takes longer to do that stuff. So I'm trying to think about how long it would take you guys to do a swap. And um, this can be done in a long weekend, um, particularly if you have all the parts ready to go. Uh, in the first video, I had everything outlined and, and laid out. And um, I think, yeah, I had everything that I needed for the swap in that at that point. Uh, there was nothing, no parts or what I was still waiting for. So that does make it easier. Um, but uh, it did take a while to get stuff in. And, and I'm, you know, I work, so I can only work on this in the evening or on the weekends. So it takes, it takes me longer. You have to work on the part and then stop. And it, it took me a little longer than, than it would if I just would have done it in a weekend and, and just went full, full at it. Also, if you guys have somebody to help you hold things in place, move things around. I mean, the number of times I had to get up here and do something and then go back underneath the car. It just, it took a while to do it by myself, but uh, if I can do it, you guys absolutely can do it. I am definitely not a mechanic pro. Um, some of this stuff I'm figuring it out as I go. And uh, I try to show all the things that I come across, the mistakes I make or, or uh, maybe what you should do. Um, for example, the headers that I purchased, um, I have a separate video for, for those headers, um, but while I was in here and doing all this stuff, I figured it was a good time to upgrade the headers. The ones that I had, I'd had some problems with them and they were on the car when I got it and I wasn't wild about them. And then switching from that mechanical linkage to the clutch linkage provided me an opportunity to, you know, maybe get something that lines up better with, because that cable has to come into the side of that bell housing straight. Well, putting everything in place up front, it, it looks like I could, it's not gonna be straight, it, it, it'd be close, but, in the end here, looking at it now, uh, the angle that it kind of comes in, it, it's working. And I had to do some extra wrap on the on the headers to protect that, that clutch cable sheath, that shielding on there. And it's working, but um, it's not ideal. So um, unfortunately, I am where I am at with that. Um, other things that I had found with this, um, I bet I could have got away with using the the flywheel that was on the car. I, I mentioned where I had the 160 tooth versus the 157 tooth. I believe the outside diameter is the same, but the tooth width was just fractionally different. Um, so the starter works. Uh, I didn't change the starter. Uh, so that all goes with it. And um, the position of the starter is the same. Um, the bell housing I bought, uh, I. I needed that bell housing because of the cable clutch. Now, if I were to keep the uh, the old mechanical linkage, I might have been able to keep that bell housing. I don't know if the transmission would have bolted up to that. I didn't look into that. Maybe you guys want to check into that. But in terms of saving some money on buying new parts, um, people definitely use the mechanical clutch, the, the, the Z-bar and all that stuff with these T5s. I just don't know what route they took to get that all stuff to work, but I could have probably saved some money there. Also, the biggest thing with this T5 swap is get the right transmission. Um, the 83 to 93 world-class T5, uh, I believe from 78 to 82 was the non-world-class or something. I don't remember the exact years, but um, it has to do with a torque rating, uh, I believe, of the transmission. Um, but 83 to 93 is the one you want more so because it's got the the uh, speedometer gear 
in on the on the output shaft uh, so that you can use just like your like I had a T10 in here and so I had a, a mechanical gear in there that spins the cable and spins the speedometer. This has a and I don't know the name of it. It's a it's a a digital situ situation. The, there's a sensor in there that's reading the bars or something on the, the tail shaft or the output shaft as it's spinning around and that's sending a signal, electrical signal. Well, I can't turn that electrical signal into a mechanical spinning without some sort of extra part. And so that was 350 bucks for that mechanical uh, system. So uh, I think I talked about it uh, where it's sitting underneath the dash um, and it's just outside so I can calibrate it. Uh, with the card so that you can, well, the nice thing about that is that I can get the, an exact speed. You do a, a marked mile and you can start it right when you hit the mileage sign, like on the side of a highway, and then stop it right when you get to the next one. So you know exactly what a mile is and then you can calibrate your, your speed that way versus trying to take the tire diameter and the gear ratios of your differential and doing the math to figure out what gear tooth. And sometimes, like I, the, in an earlier video, I had upgraded the rear end on this car and it changed from 280 or 270 gears to 355 and I had to put a different tooth mechanical gear in the transmission for the speedometer. Well the math actually I can't have a half a tooth I couldn't I think it was 20 tooth or 19 and a half I don't remember what anyways it was like a half a tooth you can't do that so I had to do the best with guessing which you know which one would be the best tooth to use and so it wasn't perfect and so anyways being able to calibrate that box I get a much better accurate speedometer reading around town it's not going to matter really it's not it's not that big a deal but it's nice to have that adjustment um, so you have to buy that extra box when you do the 94 to 04 T5 and that's what I bought it was it was an impulse buy off of Craigslist a guy had it locally and I knew I wanted a T5 but this is before I knew the differences between the, the, the earlier and later T5s and all of the extra parts that I would need to buy. The input shaft on the 94 to 04 is longer by like three quarters of an inch or seven eighths of an inch or something like that. So you have to have A, the, the, the longer bell housing because the, the input shaft is longer, or you have to get a shortened input shaft and bearing retainer to put on the transmission so that it fits the bell housing of the older setup, the 83 to 93. So anyways, hopefully some of this will help you guys out and, and figuring out which system to buy. Um, it still works. It's all bolted up, ready to go, and it's in the car, but it just costs extra money to, to do the newer transmission. Um, so if anybody's interested, try to get the older one, but you can use the newer one. It still works. Uh, let's see, what else? The The... The drive shaft, um, I don't remember how much I talked about it in the, in the first video of, the, of this two-part series. I, I got an aluminum drive shaft out of a police interceptor, the Crown Vic, um, I think it's the P71 or something like that is the classification of the, the, the police interceptor. Since I had to get a shortened shaft anyways, I thought we'll just get the aluminum one because I got to cut it down. It ended up being a lot of extra work. Um, had to buy a new tubing for that because mine was damaged. And it ended up costing more to do all that work than buying a steel shaft that was the right length, but it was cheaper than a brand new aluminum shaft. So uh, again, this is probably overkill for my application, but who knows where we're gonna go. So it's nice to have that. And it's kind of fun to have that larger aluminum shaft in there. So the only thing left to do is, um, I think we should go for a drive and uh, and, uh, and see how it shifts and see how everything works. So let's do that.
actually is the exhaust sound. Uh, it's much uh, throatier, the, those new headers, uh, although this is a different video, but uh, <laughs> those headers sound great. So this, uh, so the shifting in this, the, the gears are, are different than what was in the four speed. So I'm gonna shift more often in the lower speeds. You know, in the first and second gear of the T10, I could go faster um, with each gear. And this one, I'll have to shift more often, which is, this is fine. But uh, now I get the advantage of the fifth gear, which is fantastic. Uh, having that overdrive, um, definitely keep those RPMs down, you know, when we're driving on the highway. Uh, I do like how short the shifting is. Um, I felt like in that T10, the, the shift throw would have been a lot farther from gear to gear. This one feels uh, shorter, so I do like that. It's a little more race car-like.